The Roblox Open Cloud is a great product that has been heavily advertised and promoted recently. I really like the direction that Roblox is headed with this, as a lot of developers, especially professionals, already use programs outside of Studio to create their games. For example, many Roblox scripters use an IDE like Visual Studio Code or Sublime Text to edit their code, and a cloud hosting service like Git to keep track of changes to the code. 3D modelers often use Blender or other similar software, and graphics designers use programs like Photoshop or GIMP for their creations. There's one good reason for developers moving to other software, and that's because other options are just better and more accessible and usable for certain people. Open Cloud also gives you the option to run servers that automatically do things in your game, like send a message or save some data. Automation is one of the main reasons to use Open Cloud, but in this video, I'll talk about manually publishing your games through command without leaving your code editor. This tutorial assumes that you're already using an external code editor fluently. I still haven't told you what RBX Cloud actually is though. It's basically a tool developed by Sleitnik, a highly knowledgeable scripter on Roblox, that allows you to easily take advantage of the benefits of Open Cloud without using the current commands on the documentation that are Linux specific. If you don't have Affman or Foreman installed yet, you'll have to do that. I'd highly recommend using Affman as it's the successor to Foreman, but you can follow either of these links on screen or in the description to install one of these package managers. You'll need the Rust language framework for using either of them, and the installation link will also be in the description. Next, you'll have to create a TOML file to manage your installed plugins. If you're using Affman, you'll want to create an Affman.toml file, and for Foreman, you'd create a Foreman.toml file. If Affman is already set up properly, you should be able to run the Affman init command to automatically generate this file, though. The syntax between the two managers is slightly different, so here's a picture of an Affman.toml file and a Foreman.toml file with RBX Cloud in their dependencies list. Note that you can also use the afman add command to automatically add this to your dependencies, creating an afman.toml file if one doesn't already exist. After you run afman install or foreman install, you should be able to run rbx cloud dash dash version in your editor's terminal or a terminal set to be inside your project folder and see in regular output. If not, you may have to restart your computer. You'll then have to download an up-to-date version of your game file if one doesn't already exist, and then you can start typing the command in your terminal. You start with the phrase rbx cloud experience pub Publish, and then add your flags for the request. Dash dash file name is the first flag you should add, which defines what place file to use for your publish. If your terminal and game file are currently inside your project folder, you can simply type the name of the file for this section. If not, you can use slashes to define folders. The next flags are the dash dash place ID and dash dash universe ID to define what place to update. If you don't know your place and universe ID, you can go into studio and open your command line if it isn't already and enter the commands print game.placeid and print game.gameid to get each of the values in the output. Then you can fill out both of these flags with the results. So the place ID would go into the place ID flag, and then the game ID would go into the universe ID flag. The dash dash version type flag is very important and tells whether the game should be saved or published. Saving won't update the live game, only how it is in studio. In my case, I will just say the version type should be published. Lastly, the API key flag is used to give proof that you own the game and give permission for whoever is using the command. An API key is basically a large string of characters that is almost unguessable to prove that you own your game you're trying to edit. To give yourself and others permission to change your game, you'll have to create a key, which you can do from the creator page. When you're on this page, make sure you're using the correct creator profile. If your game is in a group, you'll want to change this to your group instead of your personal account. In my case, I'm using my personal account. Next, you need to go to the credentials section of your management page. From here, here you can create an API key to give yourself permission to your game and you'll get a bunch of configuration for your key. First of all, you should create a title and a description if you want. Next, you should define the API system, the experience to give change permissions to, and how much control Open Cloud should provide. The API system will be place publishing, then you'll search for your game title and give the operations you want to give Open Cloud access to edit. As of recording this, write is the only option, which is what you'll want to enable. This next section is the most important to get right, the accepted IP addresses section. For for added security, you can define what people specifically through a unique identifier linked to your internet connection. If you don't know how to find your IP address, you can search online for how to find it. Please keep in mind that you shouldn't share your IP address with any person, website, or program you don't trust. There's no reason for most people to request your IP address. In our case though, your 
IP address is used to ensure that your game editing powers don't get into the wrong hands. If you want anyone to use your open cloud, can't have a reliable unchanging IP address, or don't want to share your address, you can enter 0.0.0.0/0 into that field, and that will allow anyone with the API key to change your experience. Please keep in mind that this is obviously less safe. Lastly, you can set an expiration date for your API key. An expiration date will cause your API to stop working after a period of time. I wouldn't recommend this in most cases, as you can always manually turn off or delete the API, but it is there if you need it. Now you can hit save and generate key to finish the API setup. This will show you your new API key, which you'll use in the command that you were generating earlier. But before you click the copy button and paste the API key into the command, you should save your key to a text file for use outside of GitHub commands, and I'd also recommend setting it up as a secret in your cloud manager if you have one. I'll quickly go over how to set one up in GitHub. If you go to your repository settings, secrets, and actions, you can create a new repository secret that can be used from pushes to GitHub. Then give it the name API key and paste your key from the create page into there. You can then hit the save button. As I said earlier, you should also save this to a file as you can't see your API key once you add it as a secret and the secret can only be used by GitHub. So if you haven't already, add the API key flag to your command and paste in that value. At this point, if your IP address is accepted and the API is active, this should be able to publish your game. You can always revert to a previous version in your place settings, so don't hesitate to try. So let me add a custom print here just to make sure that the publish works. So I'll say hi again. So now I'm going to join my game and see if my custom script actually saved. All right, so I'm going to open up the developer console and you will see the hi again message, which is what I added. So that's how you know this works. So that wraps up the video. I hope this video helped you. You're almost to a great fully managed Roho project at this point. One last step is to make sure you sync all your other items in your game that aren't scripts. So watch this quick video to learn how to do that.